Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's study. Uh, we're going to continue, of course, our study in Judges chapter 5, just to finish that off. Uh, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this new day, this week, the opportunity to study together once again and open your word. We invite your Holy Spirit's presence uh, to speak to our hearts, to bring a conviction regarding our need of you, our sins, those that are hidden from us. We ask that you can reveal, and we ask that your Holy Spirit can bring that conviction and power um, that it can reveal sin, righteousness, and judgment to us. And we pray for each person searching for truth. We ask, Lord, that um, uh, your Holy Spirit can touch their hearts. Help us in ministering to those around us. Help us to be an influence for good. Uh, be with us now. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning again, everyone. It's nice to see you all. And uh, um, I know it's it's a long time when we get to Sunday morning after we, uh, you know, after the Thursday morning sun study. Sometimes it's hard to remember all of the things that we were discussing because um, so much happens in that period of time. Now. Um, First thing we're going to do is we just got the last few verses to address and some of this chronology. So first, I'm just going to look here. So this is the chart that we had been working on. I, I had added these, um, I, got, I duplicated the chart and added this little bit at the bottom, dealing with the 364 days. Now, I also, since the study, I put some other dates in here. So this part we want to look at, uh, the second angel's message arriving and the third angel's message arriving and how that would relate uh, to these lines. Now, <clears throat> um, so when we look at the verses themselves in Judges chapter 5, we just got to review those last few verses. So in this song of Deborah and Barak, it's the second part that we have said that is a little bit different than how we had um, laid out the other verses. That is, we would have a verse that, or a group of verses that would represent a waymark, and this would happen in order. But because this is a song reiterating uh, this past history, it's describing the past history, but there are clues or keys that help us to realize that we are repeating that history of the movement um, prior to December 25th, 2021. And so we, we found some important uh, references that helped us uh, place these waymarks, um, especially in, in the first angel's message, with the first angel arriving its formalization and empowerment. And as we address this second angel's message, um, there were things that we, we hadn't sorted out yet. And so that's what um, we're going to try to do here. Now, um, yes, dear. So in 525, we could see that this, uh, led us to December 25th, 2021. And in, in laying this verse out, we, we spent a lot of time looking at uh, this lordly dish and what that would mean. Uh, we've discussed it in, in various ways, but the basic idea here is that this is the presentation of the message. This would be... Um, the invitation that was given on December 25th, 2021, uh, to this movement. And so what we see in this line is that we have um, – we, 
we, we have these invitations. That is, this is an invitation to people in the movement to look at the history that we have passed through. Does that make sense to people that that's what, what begins on December 25th, 2021? Okay. Now we discussed this earlier. Yeah. And so we can see that this, this invitation was really rebuffed. Right? That would be the best way to, to describe it. it. It wasn't really accepted. And uh, what we see in this, uh, the way marks, for instance, we got February 12, 2022. That's the 391 words in five paragraphs. And um, this has this, uh, this mirror that uh, Stephen had worked on dealing with the 666 years and the 777 years, that it uh, creates this space of time that at the beginning and the end, if you add them together, 140 years at the beginning, and um, the, what was it, 251 years at the end, you add them together, you get 391. So that ties into the 391 words. And then it ties into the verse 526, where she put it, her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer. With the hammer, she smote Sisera. She smote off his head when he, she had pierced and stricken through his temples. And, and so we're saying that that relates to the 526 years from 457 BC to 70 AD, right? So that's 490 plus 36. And so, so we have on our chart, we have this, this 666777 mirror, which gives us 391 and 526. So it, it, um, it, it helps tie in that event of, of this discussion between me and Colin, email exchange. And then November 24th is where we get this um, 2,688 2, days, which ties into Odilio's study of the 1629. I'm not going to go through all that. And then we get to December 24th, 2022, and that's the 364 days. Um, and so we had addressed that last time, this uh, 524,160 minutes, which if divided by seven times four equals 18720. So it's divided by the four seven times, you get this July 18, 2020. Now that leads us to uh, this invitation December 24th, 2022, where we um, invite them to this understanding of the lines that we have done. So it's a lot, the lines simply presented. We wanted to present the keys that would help um, anybody studying the Trump prediction so that we could recognize that our line was typical and that we shouldn't expect Trump to be reelected, that we need to recognize that Trump's the Trump prophecy was fulfilled, and that January sixth, twenty twenty one, the the siege of Washington is where, in that line, don't get me wrong, but in that line, that would be Raffia. That's going to be the king of the South defeating the king of the North. So that means in that line, whatever that line is because we really haven't defined that line here at this point. But we know that there is a Paneum, right? And that's where the King of the North would de defeat the King of the South. And so we don't know when that is, but that would be uh, the Republicans defeating the Democrats. Now, if we have that line in a narrower sense, as, as Colin is, has presented, he would see that that would have to occur with Trump himself being the one that defeats um, uh, the globalists, 
But but there's a number of problems with that. So one is we have to take that Trump is um, Alexander the Great. Um, okay, so the Trump prophecy may be an ambiguous term, Iran says, uh, as apparently there are more there are more than one. Yes. So I'm I'm just talking in this sort of ambiguity though that I mean Colin has a prediction that Trump would be reelected. But there are many different ideas that people have about Trump. Now, originally, Jeff had made a prediction regarding Trump. And uh, that Trump was the last president of the United States. And so we take the position that that was correct. Trump was the last president of the United States. And that when the Democrats defeated Trump on January 6th, 2021, that that then is the end of the United States. At least symbolically, but within this line of how we understand it within this movement, that it's typical of something that's going to happen. So at least in type, right? So the United States still exists. But remember when, when Islam fell, when Ottoman Empire fell at the end of the second woe. The Ottoman Empire still continued till November 1st, whatever it was, 1920, 21, I always forget. It still continued. And so people looking at prophecy who, who aren't understanding prophecy, they would say, well, nothing happened on August 11th, 1840 that fulfilled prophecy because the Ottoman Empire didn't fall as predicted. But we understand that the conditions of the prophecy were fulfilled on August 11th, 1840. Um, so the same types of things would apply here. If we're gonna look at this Trump prediction, and there's a great parallel between uh, the Trump prediction and um, uh, understanding what happened with Islam in the 1840s, a very similar, uh, model or or parallel between these two so so what we know is that colin made a prediction on december 25th 2021 that uh trump was going to be reelected well not even reelected he would become president again without being reelected i mean that was his argument and so he was looking to november 8th 2022 that the midterms, that the Republicans would run the table and in doing so would be able to place Trump back upon the throne of the United States. And of course that didn't happen. So on November 24th, we were addressing this. We were addressing both Collins and Odilio study and Iran had noticed that um, because I noticed this 2,688 days to April 5th, 2030, and Iran had noticed that um, that uh, this number 2688 in the American tax forms number is an application for the additional extension of time and, of course, to file your taxes. And so, so we could see that this fit into this structure and so this November 24th, 2022 date, which we had attached to Odilia's 1629 uh, number, we now had um, this structure that we could um, that we could that we could piece together all of these other lines that we had. So this became an important uh, uh, observation about November 24th, 20. 22, which was Thanksgiving. And so this goes back to this uh, Thanksgiving prophecy back in 2018. <clears throat> so, so Judges uh, 5 verse 26 addresses that. And then we have this uh, 527. And we had addressed this at her feet. He bowed, he fell, he lay down at her feet. He bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. Now, 
this is, how, how do we characterize this verse? Judges 5, 27. So if we if we remember that when we look at 526, this has to do with the uh, the head being destroyed. So is that acquiescence? Um, okay, how would you how would you who who's acquiescing? It, it appears that um, the headless one is acquiescing to her. Okay, yep, that message. It yeah, so it doesn't mean that, because um, this would be the defeat of this message, right? And and we would have to attach this to, we would have to attach this to what we find on November 24th, 2022. So if we're going to take uh, 5 verse 27, uh, we would have to attach that. Now, so we, so we could take 527 and just say that's, you know, November 24th, 2022. But what else could we do to tie it there? Because we're, we're going to have more symbols as we go through these verses. Right. So verse 27, she bows at his feet. Right. So this message of Sisera is defeated and must bow to the message of Jael. But then we have the mother of Sisera who's looking out the window. We say the mother of Sisera represents the papacy. And so she's symbolically described as crying through the lattice, right? These are the lines. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariot? So we're going to have to address this as the second angel's message arriving. Her, her wise lady answered her, yea, they returned answer to herself. She returned answer to herself. And then it gives this description about um, have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey to every man a damsel or two? To Sisera, a prey of diverse colors, a prey of diverse colors of needlework, of diverse colors of needlework on both sides, meat for the necks of them that take the spoil. So we have this threefold sort of message, um, which in some ways parallels a counterfeit three angels messages is how we understood it. So this is referring to Parminder's message failing. Now, uh, just something that comes to mind here. Now, if, if, if Parminder's message is a three angels message, like a counterfeit, wouldn't Parminder have a line himself that um, we could we could take from Judges four and five, the line of Sisera himself. It's just a thought. Now Tess, in her presentation, she had presented a, a counterfeit line that the papacy has of the three angels' messages. I don't know if people know about that presentation, but when she, uh, prior to uh, presenting November 9th, she did these preliminary studies at the School of the Prophets. And, and she first started out with this line of the papacy. And one of the things she ended up, it had to do with um, the, uh, the miracle of Fatima, right? But she's gonna go through and give this background and how this miracle of Fatima, this prophecy, um, uh, is is fulfilled in this sort of counterfeit line of the the papacy. Uh, what was interesting about that, of course, is the miracle of Fatima occurs on October thirteenth, 
um, in what is it, 1918, if I remember correctly. Um, and, you know, it's at noon, right? And so it's going to be at noon, October 13th, uh, 2018. So I'm not sure if that's 1918 or 1917. Anyway, it's going to occur in 2019 that the 391 and a half days are recognized uh, to November 9th, 2019. So, um, so there's something in about what Tess presented that's a counterfeit, but the genuine, remember the counterfeit precedes the genuine. So, so there are, is something there that we still haven't, haven't addressed, but here we can see we've connected Parminder's message to the spirit of the papacy. And, and then we have this, um, this story of this song describing something, whether that happened or not, it's, it's, it's just something that's, I would think is, a uh, as a song, it's just symbolic. It's not, you know, we don't know really whether uh, the the mother of Sisera actually does this, but it's described in this way in this song that she's going to be looking out the window, waiting for her son. And of course, when it gets to this um, this comfort of this maiden or damsel. Um, have they not divided the prey to every man a damsel or two? Um, we can see there that that represents uh, these churches. That the purpose of Cicero's message is to conquer uh, God's people. That's that's to be the spoil to conquer a church. But Cicero fails in this. But we see that Cicero continues. So when we get take this language here, this prey and this spoil, this brings us to Isaiah chapter 8, right? So we can see the parallel here between Isaiah chapter 8 and the Sunday law that's being talked about there, but also illustrating this idea that it just comes up to the neck, not to the head when it comes to Judah. But here, Sisera is defeated. Uh, so hopefully that's not too scattered, what, what I'm trying to bring together here. I mean, I know we went through it, but there's still lots of loose threads um, that we, we need to examine. Now, there was also um, something else here. Okay, so, um, so the mother of Cicero looked out, looked out at a window and cried through the lattice. So we know the lattice represents the line. And uh, why is his chariot so long in coming? So what would the chariot be a reference to? Um, the, the device used to um, move the message around from one place to another, I, I, you know, the vessel, the, the person. Think of Daniel chapter 11, verse 40. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I didn't quite get that. You know, I have a, a, a major distraction. Yeah, I know. In my room. So Daniel 11, verse 40. So if we think about Daniel 11, verse 40, we know that this is the main verse of this movement, right? Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. Right. So we know at the time of the end, shall the king of the south push at him. So that's January 6, 2020, 2021, right? 
That is, we have a repeat of history. We took this fall of the Soviet Union and we we recognize it was a time prophecy and and that and that was the time of the end i is that what you're talking about N well no that i mean that that is the case that's 1989 and it's 1798 right so it's both those histories right but i'm saying that we took what what happened in 2015 and 16 is we recognized that um Well, I guess it would be two. Yeah, so it started, I think, late 2015. We recognized that Daniel 11, verse 1 to 4, answered to Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. That is, we looked at the Soviet Union falling in 1989, and that seemed to be the battle, the king of the north, the king of the south. So the king of the south would come, and then we would look at the king of the north is going to come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, with horsemen, with many ships. So, so we looked at 1798. That's the king of the south. And then the king of the north is 1989, right? Yeah. Okay. That's not very reasonable. Right. So that's how we looked at it. These verse deals with these two times of the end. It... it the time of the end in Millerite history and the time of the end in our history with this parallel. Now, in, in making this parallel, we saw later that Daniel 11, verse 1 to 4, um, also has a time of the end. Right? That is, it's addressing the time of the end that's um, dealing with the 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 restoration, the end of the Babylonian captivity, the rebuilding of Jerusalem and and the temple and those three decrees that lead to the start of the 2300 days, right? And Daniel 11 verse 40 is addressing the time of the end uh, dealing with um, uh, Millerite history and our history. And we saw then that the time of the end there with the last uh, first seven kings of Persia parallels our history. Specifically, we could look at the presidents of the United States, right? So this is gonna happen in 2015 and we developed this in 2016, right? So we're studying the presidents of the United States, making a prediction that Trump is going to be elected as president. Which, which happens. Now, it's not a solid, that is, Jeff isn't totally committed to that happening, that it's going to be Trump, though that seems the most likely that it's going to be Trump. And some people in the movement state that Trump's going to be reelected. You know, at that time, I wasn't so certain that I understood it enough to be definite one way or the other. So I tried to be open-minded that, you know, uh, maybe um, Clinton could be elected and it could somehow fulfill this, though it seemed that Trump being elected made more sense. So Trump was elected. And so we made a prediction. This could be a Trump prophecy, I guess, that was fulfilled. So when it's, when it's, uh, when we're talking about chariots here, this is military might, chariots and the horsemen, and then the ships is economic power, right? And you're going to have, he shall overflow and pass over. So we know that this is a parallel to Isaiah chapter 8 and also to other verses in Daniel chapter 11, this overflowing, right? So we know that this is a symbol of the Sunday law. And so in our simple recognition of this, in 1989, back when Jeff, you know, first begins to understand this, he understands 1989, it's the time of the end, it's the king of the north, defeating the king of the south, and, and this is leading to the Sunday law, right? He shall enter also into the glorious land. This is the United States, right? So the United States is going to be conquered. That is... 
the king of the north, the papacy, uses the United States as its military power, right? And so the United States ends up becoming conquered by the papacy. But there's going to be groups that escape out of the hand of the papacy, right? These are those that, that receive the everlasting gospel, right? So it goes through these different um, symbols. We're not going to go through all of this. And then we know that the tidings out of the east and the north, this is going to refer to, you know, the Battle of Armageddon. This is going to be this uh, victory of God's people over the Sunday law and the mark of the beast. And, and when this happens, the papacy is going to plant his tabernacles between the people and the glorious holy, holy mountain, right? Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him, right? So this is our understanding, really simplified, of Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. Now, if we try to understand this in relationship to uh, judges and the papacy talking about the chariots of Sisera, what would this be referring to then? I know that's a roundabout way, but you, we should be able to see it. Why are his chariots so long in coming? So what would these chariots be that the mother of Sisera is questioning why? Why it's taking so long? Okay, so the question is, do chariots equal Sunday law? That's what Iran is asking. Because the papacy is looking to defeat this message. So we know that this is a parallel. So this is the papacy. There's a battle going on within this movement. And this mother of Sisera is looking out the window, crying through the lattice, right? So this is looking at the lines. And she's questioning, why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariot? So what are the wheels? Didn't we determine that it was our, um, well, our lines and our charts and all that stuff, the wheels? Okay, yes. All so the interactions of human events. Yeah, so the wheels represents the line, right? Now... Of course, this is the wheels of Sisera's chariot. So what are these lines that fail? So one of the things when you look at this word wheels in, in Hebrew. Would that be the failed prophecies that you discovered during that time that this is what was all about? You would put this as part of the reasoning um, why the movement suffered this uh, disappointment. Okay, so this isn't about our disappointment. This is about Cicero's disappointment. Oh, okay, now I now I get it. Now I, I okay. find the direction you're going. Right, so, so this word wheel means stroke, beat, foot, step, anvil, occurrence. Um, foot, hoof, beat, foot, fall, foot, step, anvil, occurrence, time, stroke, beat. One time, once, twice, thrice, as time on time, at this repetition, this once, now at length, on now, now, at one time, at another. So you can see that this definitely relates to the lines, the placing of events upon a line, right? And Sisera, his message, has events upon a line. 
Now, I've made the statement that that Collins' prediction isn't using Miller's rules and that it's based upon the work of Parminder. That is, there is errors that Parminder introduced into the movement that persisted when, because we didn't understand our lines properly. We were looking at priest, Levites, Nethanim, and, and, and trying to use the lines in the way that Parminder did. And that when Colin made his prediction, because he hadn't uh, looked at the, the when we examined the foundation and recognized the mistakes that we had made, he was continuing this mistake. So that's what I noticed on December 25th, 2021. I could see what Colin was doing. Now I could see that he had specific light given him from God. So God gave this movement light that we needed that we still need, it came from Colin, right? So God gave this light to Colin. But because Colin didn't have the information from our studies in the morning, he didn't have this other light, he made, he drew a wrong conclusion of what this light meant. Now, I think I understand what it means, but it's going to take us some time to see it all, what Colin's, what Colin presented and how it relates to these lines. So here we have the mother of Sisera. She's wondering why the wheels of his chariots are taking so long. So this is the wheels, of course, relate to these lines. The chariots relate to military power. But in this case, what we're saying is that this is relating to an understanding of Daniel 11 verse 40 to 45 that is misapplied. That is, this is a misuse of the lines. Because the mother of Sisera is looking through the lattice and wondering why these lines, the fulfillment of these events that they have been predicting are not occurring. Does that make sense to people? It's becoming more clear. Okay. So so let's look at uh, the lines that we have. Um, okay. So these passages here in, in Judges, verse 5, we're specifically looking, we looked at 5, verse 27. And so we can say that 5, verse 27 relates to November 24, 2022. Right? So, but it relates to this whole failure of these predictions. But November 24, 2022 is this failure of this prediction. And then we have the mother of Sisera looking through the lattice. So first we see Sisera dies and he bows down. So the message of Sisera has to bow to this message of JL. So it's dead, right? This message. But yet we still have the mother of Sisera looking out at a window. And um, now a window is a piercing of the wall. That's uh, uh, Shalon, right? Um, which maybe is interesting, I don't know. Now she looked out, um, that is properly to lean out, that is by implication to peep or gaze, um, appear, look, at, and, and it can be passively be a spectacle, so, but it's not passive here. Um, but she's going to look out. She's going to peep or gaze uh, out this window. And she's going to do this through the lattice. Right? And we know that this lattice 
uh, relates to this inter interstices, right? So these are these these openings, these little tiny openings, uh, which within these lines. And and then she asks this question. Now now what is the question normally? Where do we where do we have the inquiry in a line? Anybody remember our understanding of the lines? These go way back in Jeff's studies. I'd have to say no. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I don't well, think it, I've ever it, experienced them, but if I did, I, I don't remember. Okay, it does relate to um, uh, the second angel's message. Okay, so so we would have to put this inquiry at this invitation, right? This second angel arriving. I'm, I'm just going to try to find a quote here from Jeff about the inquiry and where we place it. Um, that could be helpful because I'm I'm still trying to figure out kind of what you're even talking about. Okay, so we you're familiar with the idea of a name change. Right. It's a characteristic of a way mark. So we have different characteristics. We all have the work of the enemies, the lane of the foundation. We have the inquiry. We have the hiding. Uh, all of these different types of things that occurred um, in these different lines, we've addressed at different times. Okay. So, I mean, I'm one to like lists. You know what I mean? Um I didn't. I haven't assembled that list. Uh, yeah, yeah. We don't talk about it too much now, right? Yeah, I know. But this is something that, that I mean, to uh, to be on the same page, we have to have the same information. Yeah. So I mean, we address it in William Miller's dream. Uh, there's there's lots of different things where there's inquiries. Um, I'm just trying to find it here. Um, you know, they looked at it in, in Luke. So every time they mark this inquiry, anyway, I'm, I'm going to have to find something more specific. Um, it's going to relate to the second angel's message, right? So I'm saying that the inquiry here is, is related to the invitation. So we put on the chart December 24th, 2022. We say that this is the invitation, but we also say it's an inquiry. And we took the th 1533 and we related it to the 13, uh, um, uh, yeah, the 1335, right? So we just rearrange those numbers, right? And so we say that yeah, at the end of the 1335, you have April 19th, 1844, right? So here at the end of the 1533 days, we have the second angel arriving and it's gonna be December 24th. 2020. Now, this is going to be this one one year anniversary of December 25th, 2021, in a 364 day year, right? So we're just counting a 364 day year, which gives us the symbol of July 18, 2020. So, so we can see we can place um, these verses, we can mark at least um these ones here by 527 and then this one is 528 okay does that make sense then so now we got uh, 528 is this invitation. That's the inquiry. So even though it's not a an invitation in the verse, this idea of an inquiry marks the second angel arriving. So we're placing it there. And we also know the tarrying time begins. 
So can we say, why tarry the wheels of his chariots in in the prophecy of, of in Millerite history regarding Miller's prophecy? Would that be marked at April 19th, 1844 as well? Paralleling it with this, this way mark here. So I think we should be able to see that that fits really well with what we already had had established. So the tarrying time begins there. Now, we say that this is an invitation. So that's because an invitation is made to the Canadian group. Now, we're also going to have a camp meeting invitation. That's going to be April 8th, 2023. Now, Prior to that, I actually had it in, you know, inquired, um, and I, I don't remember the date of it, but it's going to be a week or two before that. I'm pretty sure it's in March anyway. You know, I ask about a time that people would want to have a camp meeting. So it might even have been late February, um, come to think of it, because I wanted to plan ahead. We need a time. Is there a time that's convenient for people? You know, people had different people had opinions. Um, and so then we finally gave a formal invitation to the Canadian group, this camp meeting invitation. Um, so I'm marking that. I didn't do this on, on Thursday. We didn't have that there. I put that since then, that it's April 8th, 2023, is the formalization. That is, I'm looking at this as being now with the, the first angel's message is this conflict between uh, how Colin and I on December 25th, that's a message that arrives, but it's manifest in this progression of addressing uh, Colin's prediction regarding the presidents of the United States. So then when we get to December 24th, I now make this invitation to join us in the studies on the line simply presented. So this whole line is about this invitation to the Canadian group um, and specifically this camp meeting that we planned that's going to happen on July 24th, 2023. Now we have to see this in these lines. So when we look at um, at Judges again, so let's go back there. The next verse is, there's this answer to the mother of Sisera. It says, her wise ladies answered her. Uh, yea, she returned answer to herself. Now this doesn't really make much sense right on the surface uh, they answered her it doesn't say what they answered now these ladies here these are mistress that is a female noble a lady a princess a queen and these are wise uh chacham, wise that is intelligent skillful artful um now this word wise it, the first time it's used in the scriptures is um, it's making sure here. So it's going to be in Genesis 41.8. Um, and it's going to be used in the context of wise men. So this is going to be a Pharaoh uh, calling his wise men to come and interpretate, interpret the dream. Right. Uh, you're going to see it in, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's not just referring to wise men, but different things. Okay. Um, so anyway, this, this idea of these wise ladies, um, what what do we see here as symbols? A 
so this is the wise lady, uh, wise ladies or mistresses or whatever of the mother of Cicero. So she has these wise ladies. They're going to answer, answer her. I'm just going to look at it in Hebrew here. So what are the symbols there? Yeah, so this, this is feminine plural. And again, a feminine plural. Yeah, so that's wise. And you had ladies, so ladies are what? It's feminine. Well, yeah, so usually represent churches. That's just where I'm going with that. Yeah. And and wise ladies, well, I mean, is that in their own opinion or I mean or the opinion of the Cicero's mom? Um which is we as we see it to be the um uh, uh, the universal message, so to speak. Well, that's what we have to figure out. Um, I'm just looking at some of these other words. Okay, so there are some symbolic words here. So, so the first thing that we have is we have um, we have these wise lady answer. Now, this word answer, you know, means give an account. Properly, it means to I, or generally to heed or to pay attention. By implication, respond. By extension, to, sp to begin to speak. Specifically, to sing or shout, testify or announce. Give account, answer, bring low, um, shout, sing, speak, testify, utter, bear witness. Okay, so it's got lots of little subtle meanings, but the idea is it's basically paying attention. So these wise ladies acknowledge what the mother of Sisera is asking. Sounds like they agree. Um, well, but the thing is, is she doesn't have, she's asking a question. And, and so I wouldn't say that they agree because there's not really an agreement, something to agree to yet. So normally here in, in Ant, so they're paying attention. They're listening to the mother of Sisera. They're taking heed to what the mother of Sisera is asking. But then it says, uh, but she returned answer to herself. Now this word answer is a different word. Um, it's something said. So she's going to say to herself, right? So she's going to answer or respond to what she had asked. Okay. Now the word returned is the word shuv. So this is an important Hebrew word. It's the same way word as restore. Then, you know, unto 2000 or uh, what is it? Um, the going from the going forth of the commandment to res to restore and build Jerusalem. That word restore is the word shoe. It means return. Right? So this word is really basic Hebrew word, just like the word head would be, you know, rosh. Okay. Um, so if we try to understand what the mother of Sisera is asking, that this is the second angel's message arriving to this movement, it's being presented from the viewpoint of those that have been defeated or those that um, are behind the message that has been defeated, right? The mother of Sisera, the papacy. So it's just figurative. That is, in this story, we don't believe that actually Sisera's mother says this. You know, it's not what, what's really being said in this song. It's illustrating something in this symbolic language. And if we try to apply this to this movement now, um, the wise ladies would be who? Now, take a note of the Hebrew number for the word wise. What is that number, 2450?
Anybody know what that number is? Two, four, five, zero. The estimated number of Jubilee years. Okay, so uh, in 1842, they made a chart. The first chart they made uh, was a model for, for the 25, 20, or for the 1843 chart, right? And on that chart, that first chart that they had made, uh, it had three time prophecies. What were they? Well, there was, um, well, I don't, I'm not really sure my focus isn't there, but the focus went to 2450. And that was the years between 607 BC and midnight of 1844. So that has to be some sort of a, uh, where you're going with this or possible. Yeah. So there's going to be three. And if I remember them correctly, I, I'm, um, 2520, 2450, <clears throat> and 1260, I believe. Oh, are, are we talking about in the corner? No, we're not. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, that's, so it's not the 1843 chart. It's the chart made before the 1843 chart. So that chart, yeah, I believe that's what it is. Twelve six, right? So we have, uh, and I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. Um, on which chart again? It's. The, the chart made before the 1843 chart. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. I have a hard copy. I have to fish through my stuff, so I'll have to listen to what you're saying. I can't remember if it was, it was either the 1335 or uh, the 1260, but... Uh, but, but the point is it had the... The two four five zero. This is the jubilee. The great jubilee is how Miller characterized it, and that is what he did. Um, he believed the jubilee cycle was fifty years, not forty nine. So he took it as forty nine jubilees. Um, but it's actually fifty jubilees. So it's still fifty times forty nine. And and if you count from six oh seven. You know, that's going to give you 1843 if you ignore the fact there's no zero year. Okay, yeah, so Rosanna has a comment, which we will look at uh, 530. So, um, so the wise ladies here, I'm going to take as the ones that Sisera is has not defeated, right? So even though we, these are her wise ladies answered. Um, when, when you look here, um, I don't think it, it says her wise ladies. It just says wise ladies. So I think her could be, because I don't see that it says that it's, it's her wise ladies. But um, but that's the way they're they're uh, translating. Just the wise ladies. I don't see anything that shows it possessive. Um, but so these wise ladies then would have to be those that believe in the 2450. That is, they're not really answering her. They're heeding, they're paying attention to what she's asking. Have we been paying attention to the question of why these things failed? I would have to say no. Well, uh, not everybody. No, we are, right? The wise are. The wise are paying attention and asking that same question. But she's going to answer herself, right? She's going to return answer. 
Now, what she says is, is still a question. So, so I mean, it's, it's, it's not really an answer in the sense of here's why, but we would have to say that we can look at and pay attention to what has happened in this movement. We can look at the failure of Colin's prediction and we can we can give an answer to this to this question. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey to every man, a damsel to comfort comfort him, right? Uh, to Cicera, a prey of diverse colors, a prey of diverse colors of needlework of diverse colors of needlework on both sides, meet for the necks of them that take the spoil. So what this message of Sisera and the mother of Sisera is expounding upon it is they want to see, they wanted to see, the papacy wants to see whatever it is this message wanted to accomplish, it was to conquer this movement. And they were doing so with this counterfeit message. Right? And so we have this prey of diverse colors, a prey of diverse colors of needlework, of diverse colors of needlework on both sides. And it's meat for the necks of them that take the spoil. So this again brings us to Maher Shalal Hashvaz, right? The son of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 8. The overflowing. It comes only to the neck. But here, you know, we can see it's for the necks of them that take the spoil. So we can see how that relates. Now, I want to look at this word necks. So the word necks, uh, savar, um, the first time that it shows up is, um, is when, and we talked about this a little bit before, but this is when it, uh, Jacob is going to deceive his father, right? With these a uh, goat skins upon his head, ha upon his hands, and upon the smooth of his neck. Right? These are kids of the goats. So he's going to put this this skin on him, so that his father feels him, and he'll think it's just Esau's. He's a hairy man, right? Now. Um, So how does this relate then to what we're addressing here? What is this story of Jacob deceiving his father? What does this have to do with any of this? Why would we look at this neck here? So they're going to put on their necks. What are they going to put on their necks here in Judges 5.30? A prey of, di <clears throat> of diverse colors. Okay, so what is that? Now, we don't have this word uh, mentioned specifically anywhere else. Right? It's just here in Judges 5.30. It's transver translated as colors and as diverse. It's a very... I remember diverse colors, I think. Wasn't that Joseph's coat? Yeah, the the coat of many colors. Yeah. The coat of many I mean, colors. That's... I mean, isn't that diverse? Uh, I, I, I'm just I'm just saying. Yeah, just yeah. The coat of many out. colors is diverse, right? So whether that's a reference to that or not, I don't know. But 
we at least could think, consider that that's a possibility, even though it's a, a different, uh, different word. It, at least in English, it reminds us of the coat of many colors. So this is a counterfeit again, though, right? Okay, but again, aren't we also seeing this as a doubling? Well, we saw this as a progression. Okay, but what I'm what I'm referring to, as the verse reads, to Sisera, a prey of divers colors, a prey of divers colors of needlework. And then of diverse colors of needlework on both sides. Right. So there's three three steps. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. It's a three step progression. Mess. Okay, I get it. Okay. Um, and this is for the necks of them that take the spoil. Right. So so the, the idea here is this is. Yeah. Diverse, yeah, means different, or, or a variety. Um, and, and of course, diverse here is they don't have a separate Hebrew, Hebrew word. Uh, it just is, is the word sabah, which means to dip into coloring fluid, right? So these are dyed needlework, uh, and there's needlework on both sides, Diverse colors of needlework on both sides. So these are, are different colors of threads. Now, we're saying that this is a counterfeit, that this is um, the work of Tess in her prediction. But we're saying that this has continued in the movement, that these false ideas are used in making an application of our message incorrectly. Now, when it comes to the word next, so 6677 is the Hebrew word. Now, uh, this um, 6677 reminds me, because we looked at this the other day, and I'm just going to find it again, um, what the diagram that Stephen had done. So this diagram was um, where is it here? I think it's this one. All right. So this is what we had looked at on Thursday. So I'll just show you in a sec. So when I think of the 6677 number, I think of 666777. Now, now that's the word next. So can we say that this understanding of these lines to the message of Sisera is something that defeats Sisera. Because remember, the 777 years Stephen found on December 25th, 2021. So that's going to be this first message. So I'm just saying that this is an oblique reference, the word next, to this. But this is the thing, this, this message here, this understanding that we have of this chronology relating to the Sunday law, 666, and the 777, our lines, is essential for us to uh, defeat the message of Sisera. And any thoughts on that? Maybe there's some, some other way to understand this. And we got the 526 years in the, the middle here, right? So this is going to do address the first message in this line that we have drawn out here in Judges 5.
So now when we when we look at this um, this question that she has and her response, which is still a question. we would have to relate this to the second angel's message in this line from December 24th. Now, I would just say a simple thing to do would take this wise lady's answering as this camp meeting invitation connected to that. Does that make sense to anybody why I'm saying that? I'm sorry. I was sitting in the back doing calculations. I didn't quite hear you. So the camp meeting invitation, that's 529. That's the answering of the wise women, the wise ladies. Okay. And then we have the camp meeting itself. And again, this is the mother of Cicero giving her answer. And how would we relate this to the camp meeting itself? So if I'm saying that the camp meeting is the next way mark, and I'm saying that's five verse 30. Now, in the chat, um, there was a question asked. Um, sounds like two sides, a division, each taking prey with them. So this was Rosanna uh, making this comment. Um, now she has it crossed out there. Um, I didn't mean to cross it out. Okay. So I, I was wondering why it was crossed out. Anyway, they have not divided the, have they not divided the prey? So I would think that what we have here, uh, I mean, dividing the prey uh, is 2505. Kalak means to be smooth, uh, to apportion, to separate, distribute, divide, flatter, give, apart, take away a portion, receive, separate, sell, smooth, right? So, um, but this here, the prey, right, this is... Shalal, so that's from Mahar Shalal Hashbaz. And um, let's see here. And, and the prey here is the church, right? This is, this is a woman. A, and to every man um, that is a warrior. And and there it it this word uh, rosh is the word that's translated as every seven two one eight is all the uh, numbers of um, July eighteen twenty twenty. So we I got take it as this group is being divided. Right. So so we can see that this camp meeting. Can we define group? Well, this movement. Are we talking about the, when are we yeah, talking the about the movement? Okay, fine. Yeah. So, so the movement is being divided. Not that anybody wants to see that, but that that's, that's been the result of these messages since December twenty fifth, twenty twenty one, at least. That within this movement, there is is created a division. And, you know, what we have been seeing from the lines as we've been studying is that God wants us to bring us together to the upper room. Now, the invitation to a camp meeting is a very logical idea that we should get together. And, and definitely it was not uh, you get together to listen to me speak. Uh, the idea is different people were invited. Colin was invited to speak. Daniel Fontenot was invited to speak. Right? Uh, other people I invited as well. But they've all turned down the invitation. Those 
those, those people that I mentioned. Now we have other people, of course, that are part of this group, Stephen, uh, Dwight, Iran, right? So we have people that are going to be speaking and there's gonna be some other people speaking, uh, hopefully. And, you know, what we're, we're, we're there for is to study together to see each other face to face and everybody's still invited. Nobody's excluded. There's no cost for the camp meeting. Right. So people, people can come to the camp meeting if they can make it, they're all welcome. And everybody's going to be heard and listened to, right? This is the purpose of this. This is to be the upper room. That's how we, we see this line developing, but not all will choose to be there. So, so here we have this, this camp meeting coming up and this, this is the response of Cicero's mother. Right? Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey to every man a damsel or two? To Cicero, a prey of diverse colors, a prey of diverse colors of needlework, of diverse colors of needlework on both sides, meet for the necks of them that take the spoil. So from Cicero's mother's point of view, they want to see the message of Cicero defeat the message of JL, right? The message of Barak, the message of Deborah. But we can see that already Cicero has been defeated by November 24th, 2022, right? I would have to agree. Yeah. To persist in continuing to make predictions regarding Trump, even if some of those predictions come true, let's say Trump gets elected as the president of the United States again. It has nothing to do with the prediction that, that Jeff had made regarding Trump being the last president of the United States. Trump is not bringing in a Sunday loan. Now, I believe that the Republicans at some point are going to defeat the globalists, that there's a civil war going on in the United States we saw the King of the South, the Democrats, defeat the Republicans on January 6th, 2021. And we're going to see the Republicans respond at some point. It wasn't November 8th, 2023. And it's not going to be, um, or 2022, and it's not going to be in 2024. And we know that because of what the lines are telling us. That even though we have all of these way marks, and these way marks will have midnight and midnight cry and Sunday law as symbols, that those are still future. That midnight in, like, there's still future in this line that we have that Jeff had created, where we had. 9-11, midnight, midnight cry, Sunday law. We are still not to the midnight on that line. Because we are, the book of Judges is a zoom into the arrival of the second angel's message in that line, which is 9-11. So we're still zoomed into 9-11 at the present time in this movement. The second angel's message has arrived. It has not yet been formalized. When it is formalized, it will be the message that is given to the Levites. It will be prepared. We will have a means and a way to give a message to the Seventh-day Adventist church. But that is not yet. Because that work has not been done. And you can't put the cart before the horse. To believe that the Sunday law is going to be 
imminent when we haven't done our work. The church has not been warned. If we believe it's imminent, we would have to believe that this movement is not the movement that has the message. It would have to be some other message. So, so does it make sense then that we can put, uh, I'm getting rid of these question marks here, that we can put the camp meeting as the empowerment of this message regarding the invitation to this movement? And so what is that invitation really? If we're saying it's the second angel that arrives on December 24, 2022, what is that message? That we are to glorify God by the way in which we study. Okay. But but it is an invitation message. So it's an invitation to study God's word correctly based upon the light that has been given us in the past. I would agree to that. And we can see how that parallels Millerite history. When Miller's prediction fails. Um, we know that's going to be April 19th, right? You know, technically should be sunset April 18th, uh, 1844. So they're going to have, Miller is going to write an apology. His, he has two, what we would call apologies. There's one that's published on, uh, I don't know if it's May 1st or May 2nd, 1844. I forget that now. Um, I'll find it here. So he makes his initial apology as um, because his prediction had failed. Now, later on, he's going to make an apology in defense, which I found one place said it was written July 18th, 1845, but I think that's actually incorrect. But uh, I just gotta grab this here. So, yeah. So there's just some comments in the chat here. Uh, Samuel had asked uh, or said, "I always ask myself, how shall we do the work of warning the church when we are still having defects in our characters?" Dwight says, much agreed, we, are, we yet need the upper room experience. Now, we have to remember from our perspective, we will always see ourselves as erring, helpless, condemned sinners, even if we are uh, living representatives of Christ. Because that's the nature of somebody who's converted. They're not going to see themselves as righteous. But we do know that we have problems and these problems are not these little external sins that we see in ourselves those are the symptoms of a much uh, more serious illness that is we suffer from eye trouble if you want to use that illustration that is we think we are better than we really are right it's all about self now um yeah, I just want to dig up. So th th that also uh, leads into a uh, study of Paul, doesn't it? Um, blinded. Oh, oh, so yeah. So Paul was blind. Yeah. That's an illustration of it. Um, I think it's in here. This is the easiest place to find it. So... Um, that's the reason why. Okay. So we have um, Samuel Snow's letters. So February 22, May 1st. Yep. 
Yeah, so it's May 2nd. So so Samuel Snow has a later letter that's May 2nd, 1844. That's going to be published on May 2nd, 1844. Um, but Miller wrote a letter on May 2nd, 1844. So it's, it's obviously not published then because it was uh, written then. And in this, he makes uh, an apology. He says, I confess my error and acknowledge my disappointment. Yet I still believe that the day of the Lord is near, even at the door. And I exhort you, my brethren, to be watchful and not let that day come upon you unawares. Um, so this is, uh, most people don't know about this apology and defense. It's not the, the one he wrote in 1845. Um, so it, it's in, uh, I'll just show you here. Obviously, it's in the uh, the Three Angels Messages source book. It's in this section on the Midnight Cry. And uh, there's a, the Snow's letters dealing with the death warrant. And then Miller's uh, message to the Second Advent believers. So it's in this one that he makes this. Uh, apology and defense, I guess you would call it, but it's not not to be confused with the later one. And so it's interesting that it's written on May 2nd as well. So in that uh, chiasm, where May 2nd is the center of Snow's letters, ending with July 18. Now, uh, so going back, Our time is basically up, but um, just to sort of point where we get what we got to finish off here. So in this line, we, we come to this camp meeting. So we can see that there's a division that occurs with this midnight cry message. And and what we're hoping is that this this study, this camp meeting brings together this movement. And that people can see the message. So even if everybody isn't there, you know, we're hoping and praying that what is presented there gets to other people. Now, of course, they're going to be recorded so people can watch these meetings. And it'll be a little more interesting than watching our morning studies. It's not going to be so, so plodding. Um, it's going to be more the highlights of things. Now, um, so we're just going to finish this off tomorrow just because we don't have time, but it's going to be fairly simple to finish this off, hopefully, unless we come up with some other things that we notice that we have to address. So um, do we have the ability to live stream? What, what's that? Do we have the ability to live stream? Is there... Uh a way to do it. Yeah, we're going to live stream. Uh, we'll probably yeah, do it it's a through Zoom, YouTube. A Zoom through YouTube. It's really cool while it's going on. Yeah, we'll probably just do it through YouTube because we're not going to have people talking through the, you know, like Yeah, Zoom. we don't really want that. It didn't, it didn't work when the School of the Prophets tried it. Right. And it doesn't really work for, for the speaker. It, it's... I mean, it's a presentation. It's not an interaction at that point. Presentation yeah, well, is to interactions. When it's live streamed on YouTube, people can write questions. And right in the chat. In that, if there is a good question, can pose it to the speaker. There we go. I right. like that. Yeah, that's that's the simple way to do it. So that's what's going to happen. There, there should be a time for open discussion. Oh, of course. Actually, every presentation is a time for open discussion. It's much easier to do open discussion in person than it is on Zoom. All right. Yes, but um, but due to whatever conflicts that come up, um, the ability to interact uh, long distance uh, will be a godsend. 
Um, I'm not sure what you mean, but. Well, having um, Zoom interaction during your during the presentation, so people that want to you know go into the Zoom can actually talk about what's going on. Yeah, we're not going to have Zoom in Zoom at all. Okay. Using YouTube. As, as I said, Zoom, it doesn't work. YouTube does. Because people can write a, a I question. hear you. Yeah. Okay. I hear you. Okay. Yeah. So so people who are there in person, they'll be able to discuss openly. And, and of course, somebody on uh, can ask a question, and that can be posed to whoever is speaking, and they can respond to it. But I'm just saying that it's a lot more interesting to speak to people in person and to have a discussion with people in person than on Zoom. Zoom. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying that we can't always do that, and that's what Zoom has been put into the oh, Zoom. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, that's why Zoom is just what we have right now. This is this is better. Like, you wouldn't do this on YouTube. Um, we wouldn't no, but you might do a, a, a Zoom while the YouTube is live stream is going on so you can interact with those that wish to discuss it. Yeah, I'm saying you can't do that. They tried that at the School of Prophets. It didn't work. What do you mean? They did Zoom presentations while they were live streaming on YouTube and it didn't work. That's what I'm saying. What do you mean that it didn't work? It, because you can't really you respond what you need. when you're speaking and you have a live audience you're going to ignore what's happening on zoom it's too much to pay attention oh, okay so now i understand your principle exactly you weren't quite clear before and yeah. i agree okay yeah yeah because when they tried it it, it it didn't work it was just a distraction so you said when they tried it but you did not describe what they tried. So I had mm -hmm. problems trying to understand what you were talking about. Yeah, because you weren't around then, right? No, I was not. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I was the one that was watching those presentations after they were done. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see the watching the videos that even though they had a Zoom, not much happened with the Zoom. Um, they tried it. It was very difficult uh, to get communication happening. Most of the time, the biggest problem I ever had with with just the uh, uh, YouTube presentations is there wasn't documentation that went with it. Most of the time, you had to call some or write somebody and try to get that stuff. But uh, some persons had in different groups had posted these notes, uh, and that's the only reason I'm able to I have any of them at all. Okay. Um, well, they, they were all actually posted up on the – every time you went to the YouTube, the notes were posted right there. Okay, so that's that's what we need to – we need to be able to be doing is, is, is yeah. flying these yeah. things to those. Yeah, we're, so we're going to – people can this. actually reference this stuff because – Yeah, you know, everything will be there. It's not – Roseanne <laughs> asked me um, something last night um, because of all the stuff that we talk about all the time. Yeah. Um, Roseanne at times might not be able to understand certain um, numbers, and yeah. So yeah, that's why that's why we're doing notes for the camp meeting with well, all, of this, that, that, all of this stuff that all of this stuff that we covered. It has all, all those notes in it. What's you know, that? What those symbols are, what they lead to. Not, I don't have all the diagrams in there. I just have right. an Excel That's sheet what I'm saying that is we, numbers. In the notes that we will have for the camp meeting, all the diagrams will be there. And and everything will be explained in the notes. On paper? Yes. All right. Yeah, that's. I'm writing a paper on on the whole study that's going to be. And I think what she yeah. meant was, was on paper. Is that what you meant? I really on paper? Is, yeah, it's on paper because I don't have book. access the other way. Yeah, everybody okay, at the camp meeting, thought. everybody at the camp meeting will have the notes printed out. There you go. Yeah, you always do that. We we've done that at every camp meeting. <laughs> I've never been to a camp meeting, so I've yeah, okay, yeah. So you always have all the notes printed out of all the speakers. Now some speakers don't provide notes because they don't know what they're going to speak about, but. You know, we're going to have Stephen's notes and my notes and Dwight's notes and 
Lorenz and whoever notes, whoever needs notes, they're going to be there. And they will be printed out and provided, plus they'll be in PDF form available to everyone uh, being posted on the YouTube, uh, a link on the YouTube page that the live streaming is on. So anyway, we got to go. So uh, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning. And we pray that you can bring us together again to uh, look into these things. We pray for the camp meeting, uh, for the plans for it. We know, Lord, that um, there's still a lot to be done. And there's many people coming and are planning to come that we don't know of. We just pray that your angels can guide them, all who should be there. Um, we pray, Lord, for um, this movement, for each person in it. We know, Lord, that uh, we have not always represented you, and we ask for forgiveness. And we ask that you can um, work in our hearts so that people can see the changes in our lives. Be with us through the rest of this day, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.